CIUT 89.5 Toronto. Hey, good evening and welcome to How. Thanks for joining us. Hope you can stick around for the hour. We've got a really good show tonight. I'm very excited about all the guests that we have here tonight. We're going to start with an interview with Matt Keyes, who is uh, part of the uh, soul duo uh, Keys to Belfast. And uh, we're going to talk to him momentarily about, about some upcoming gigs uh, right around the corner and, uh, and then play a track from his CD, their CD, Keys to Belfast. And then we'll be talking to poet Steve McOrmond with his book called Reckon, which is published by Brick Books. And then we'll be speaking with musician David Bray with his uh, CD, Crowded Isolation, which is uh, in play all around the world right now. So very excited to have everybody here tonight. And I'd like to welcome to the studio Matt Keyes, who is part of Keyes to Belfast. And they uh, have been on the show, uh, and I, I met them through Nick Beat, and uh, the late great Nick Beat, and um, and it's just always always a pleasure to see them again and see what's happening with them. Hey, Matt. Hey, Nancy. How are you? I'm awesome tonight. <laughs> I'm just happy that the heat has kind of broke a little I bit. I know it was something, wasn't it? It eh? was a little much. Yeah, but this it was. is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we're happy. Uh, really happy to be here, and thanks so much for having us again. And again, we we uh, we sure miss Nick. Yeah, well. we do. Yeah. We do, and uh, so try to carry on yeah. for him as much as, as we can. And, well, you're and doing uh, amazing, so uh, well, congrats you. to you. We, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to include uh, guests that no one feels that they're being left out. Or yeah, yeah. Carry on with the Howl tradition yeah, as for best sure. we can. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you've got some amazing stuff happening in, in uh, the world of Keys to Belfast. You're going to be at the jazz festival on the 29th yeah the and, yeah well and the beaches yeah the beaches jazz run the j oh it's the run it's the run okay. yeah so we've done that for uh this will be our third year doing it um and uh they usually put us on the route somewhere and we uh, as people go by and running we give them some encouragement with some uh some youtube music yeah which we're well known for and um it's been really successful, and we've had a lot of good positive feedback over the last few years about it. So this year, the Beaches Jazz Run, I th I'm not sure where exactly they're going to put us, but uh, I have heard rumors it might be at the start-finish line so that uh, this year everybody can, uh, everybody can enjoy, can enjoy it. Yeah. 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 Play. So, so you, you play a lot of U2 music, but you play a lot of your own music as well? Yes. Yeah. So you and your partner, John Davey, do you both write? Yes, we both we both are involved, and uh, usually what happens in the writing process is I'll come up with a with a concept, an idea, uh, something, and I'll present it to Johnny, and and he'll say, "Oh, that's that's terrible." <laughs> <laughs> you have to have honesty. In well, your he part. is Irish, and the Irish are brutally honest. <laughs> Sorry, here's Johnny. The, here um, to the uh, Irish. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, you know, he'll usually like it and we'll wor work on it a bit more and expand and he'll come up with some great guitar you know uh, yeah. passages for it that just bring it to life so nice. i usually start with the uh, me creating the core and then we just work together on expanding it so the song we're going to listen to soon mm -hmm. uh this this was on the uh top 40 in canada last year yeah we got very fortunate through um uh, anti-skeptic entertainment we were able to market uh, the song across Canada. It did, uh, we were told it would be very difficult to break into top 40 radio. And we managed to pick up uh, some stations uh, throughout Canada, right from east coast to west. And uh, we're very fortunate we had uh, some radio play on top 40 stations. We weren't able to get it in Toronto. It's very difficult to break into Toronto with Virgin Radio and um, things like that, uh, you have to be, sell, you know, millions of, uh, st streams. Of know, streams, yeah, yeah the, the digital counts now. Yeah, the digital well. counts uh, are huge, and that's what gets you on the radio for that, but, uh, we, but we did well, so yeah. we, were, we had a lot of positive feedback, and just to break into that was, you know, I think the first station to pick us up was Glow, 
shout out to Glow 100 on Manitoulin Island. Oh, I love Manitoulin Island. <laughs> yeah. I think they were the first station that played Way to go, 40. Glow. Yeah. 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 Way yeah. to go. Yeah, it's beautiful go. out there. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only thing I'd say about going to Manitoulin Island is to always make a reservation for a hotel. Because <laughs> we went there and it was booked. Everything was booked. Was and it? And yeah. it's kind of hard. And the ferry was booked. So oh, we geez. couldn't. Yeah. So it was. Wow. It turned out okay, but it was <laughs> it was kind plan, of plan ahead. Yeah, plan ahead or bring a tent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can always can't find a campsite somewhere, but yeah, right on. Yeah, yeah so so that's that's great. Yeah. and uh, you're also you're also going to be uh, uh, opening for the Mississauga Music Week. Yeah, that was on the July thirtieth. Quite an honor to be asked to uh, to do that. We're going to kick off uh, the first uh, Mississauga Music Week. And uh, we'll be doing that on July 30th at uh, 6.30 at night at Rock and Docks in Port Credit. Nice. Yeah, and yeah. that's a great venue. It's a great venue. Been there forever. It's a staple in the, in the community uh, for great live entertainment. Uh, so that'll kick it off. Uh, and we'll kick it off with about a 45-minute set. Uh, then following us will be um, – oh, sorry, I just knocked something here. Uh, following us will be Mel Rose, and finishing the night will be the South Downs. Nice. So, yeah, all of us are uh, uh, part of the Mississauga Arts Council, um, and we've all been nominated for Marty Awards. And You won last year? Yeah, we managed to win uh, last year for, for Best Emerging, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, best mm-hmm. emerging uh, Music Group. Congratulations. And this year we were nominated for uh, Best Established Music Group. We did not win, but uh, it was nice to get the But you got the recognized nod. as yeah. well. Yeah. It was encouraging to keep keep going. There's Absolutely. A, there's a strong community of musicians in Mississauga. Definitely. We're very tight. Uh, there's a lot of phenomenal talent yeah, in Mississauga. Really. In fact, I often shake my head and I can't believe some of these artists haven't been... <laughs> picked up and with it's amazing isn't it yeah it really yeah, is it really is yeah and i'm not saying that just to blow smoke it's it's a real real solid truth and yeah. uh it's unfortunate that such great talent just sits there and you know we i know some artists that just gig and gig and gig and they're out there every you know almost every day um and working so hard and that lady luck just isn't. It's not. That's just not there sometimes. It's not yeah. There. Yeah. It's. it's a mi- I don't know. Yeah. It's that mystery. That. Yeah. Q factor or whatever. It yeah. Is. Right place at the right, right time, time. The right person. Yeah. And all of a sudden doors start to open. Yeah. And um, you know, uh, we've been fortunate to have uh, a few doors open in our direction, and we hope to have a few more in the near future. I hope that too. Mm-hmm. I, I, um, we were talking earlier about the launch that, mm-hmm. that, uh, and, and another show called the shot, which I'm not familiar, but right. I will check it out. Yes. Um, but I, I like shows that give opportunities to emerging or young artists of all ages to, uh, to really get their, their art out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Any, anything that provides that opportunity is kudos, kudos yeah. to them for, for giving, you know, local musicians and everybody who's, you know, starving artists, yeah. give them a chance, give them a shot. Just like that's why it's called the shot. The shot. Yeah, that's uh, that's based um, in the Kitchener Waterloo area. Oh, excellent! Yeah, yeah. and uh, the launch we entered uh, this year to give that a shot. Um, I think I'm it's a great show. Yeah, the launch is really super, and uh, yeah. thousands apply and. Very competitive. Very, very competitive, competitive, yeah. But, you know, you never know until you throw your hat in the circle, and I'm certainly, we're certainly trying. <laughs> that's, what y- that's it, right? That's all you can do. That's yeah. all you can do. You keep moving forward. You just keep, you know, my dad used to say, you know, when he's playing football, he'd be like, just keep the legs moving. When you get hit, just keep the legs moving, keep moving forward. Nice. And, and that's, that's a sort of a good metaphor for the music industry. Yeah. We, you get hit a lot. You get you know, push down a lot and turn down a lot, but you got to keep moving forward and you have to keep believing in yourself. That's the key, I think, because yeah. I'm uh, very different, but but I'm writing a novel, and that's what I'm finding, that 
that um, the opinions are all over the map. Yeah. Like you think you get real encouragement, and then the next person just looks at you and goes, well, you know, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Same with songwriting. And so you go, yeah. you just have to really, you know, what am I doing? I know what I'm doing. Yeah. And and uh, and then just sort of believe in yourself. Well, and, uh, and just further to that, uh, we had a situation where our first song that we produced, uh, we I thought it was terrific, and... Uh, you know, as uh, every artist does, they think their yeah. stuff is really good. But I thought this song in particular was really something, and I presented it and was told, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> just flat out, absolutely flat not. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. You, you feel hurt for a, for a minute, but then you have to grow thick skin very quickly. Very quick. Very and you, quickly. yeah, you set it aside, and I, I quickly regrouped, and I said, okay, what do we got to do to get a song on the radio? I thought about the things, the key elements, and then I wrote a song, and I gave it to our producer, Michael Shotton, who's based out of Burlington. And he said, you know, leave this song with me, and uh, it was it was called Just Another Love Song. And we're going to be listening to it. We'll listen to that in, in a bit, yeah. And uh, actually, when I wrote it, it sounded like a country song. Oh. <laughs> but I wanted to break into the pop market, and that's where a great producer can take a song and mold it and add some things here and there. And yeah, that's yeah, what Michael did. Yeah. And the next thing you knew, we had something that was actually worthy for a top 40. Well, congratulations to you. I'm really happy Thank to, you so much. to hear of your successes. And may there, may there be many more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, next time, I'd like to have you back when uh, John can join us. And yeah, maybe you can perform for us live. Yeah, I know he's he's his apologies for not being here, but he's definitely here in spirit today. Well, hey to John. Yeah. yeah. And if sure. I if I can just give a quick shout out to my sons. Absolutely. Because they're they might be listening, I hope. I hope. <laughs> 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 to uh, Mark, Luke and Sam. Uh, Dad loves you. And to my coworkers that might be listening. Thank you guys for your support. Awesome. Mm -hmm. This is CIUT 89.5 FM, and we're talking to Matt Keyes, who is part of Keys to Belfast, and they will be performing at uh, the Beaches Jazz Run on July 29th, and on July 30th, they'll be at opening for Mississauga Music Week with a great lineup. So At Rock and Docks in Port Credit. Yeah, which yeah. is a great, great place. So yeah. it's uh, a great, and we're having great weather, so... All the best. Fingers crossed Fingers that it stays crossed that, that way. Fingers crossed it stays that way. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming in. Thanks so much, Nancy. I really appreciate you having us. You're very welcome. Yeah. So now we're going to listen to... Just Another Love Song by Keys to Belfast. On CIUT 89.5 FM. Just another love song. Just another love song. Just another love song.
International Jazz Festival celebrates its 30th year. The Beaches Jazz Festival will transform Toronto's lakefront community into a music lover's haven from July 6th to 29th. Woodbine Park, located at Coxwell Avenue and Lakeshore Boulevard East, will feature main stage performances from July 20th to 22nd and July 27th to 29th. Street Fest returns with over 100 artists performing on Queen Street East from July 26th to 28th. Funds raised via the Beaches Jazz Run will support Michael Guerin Hospital Foundation through a portion of runner registrations and donations. For more information, visit www.beachesjazz.com. Hey, we're back. This is CIUT 89.5 FM. Nancy Jane Bullis Greer in the chair tonight. I want to say thank you to Chris Cabasoso for teching. Thank you so much. And uh, next week, Valentino Ascenza will be in the chair. So please stick around for, for uh, Valentino's show, and I'll be back in two weeks. Right now, I'm very happy to have Steve McCormand in the studio with his new book of poems called Reckon, which is published by Brick Books. And we were just talking in the break that uh, that uh, we I, I interviewed Steve with his book called Lean Days back in when we were at 91 St. George Street. I still have that address and printed on my brain. <laughs> I was like, but now we're in Hard House, and uh, so I'm very very pleased to see. Uh, Steve again, and I'll just introduce him to people that may not be familiar with uh, this author. Steve McOrmond is the author of three previous collections of poetry, most recently The Good News About Armageddon, published by Brick Books 2010. His second collection, Primer on the Hereafter, Woolsack and Wynn 2006, was awarded the Atlantic Poetry Prize. His debut collection, and that's the one we talked about, Lean Days, uh, was published by Woolsack and Wynn in 2004, and it was shortlisted for the Gerald Lampert Award. And, uh, and Steve was originally from Prince Edward Island, and he now lives here in Toronto. So thanks uh, for coming in tonight. Thank you, Nancy. It's good to be here again after yeah. uh, this, a long time. Yeah, 2004, 2005. It yeah. seems like a long time ago. I yeah. know, but it, it, it is and it isn't. <laughs> it's like amazing. But uh, this is a wonderful uh, book. This is called uh, Reckon, and I'll just read uh, a bit from the back of the book. Uh, Steve McCormand's Reckon hones in on those fugitive moments when the parts of ourselves that have not been entirely subsumed by consumer capitalism escape their cages. A photographer's lifelong desire to collect snowflakes, an adolescent's game of show me yours, the small defiant act of letting a cell phone call go to voicemail. Responding to a poem from Reckon that appeared on Poetry Daily, comedian Patton Oswalt tweeted a perspective one-liner review. Steve McCormand's new poem, Pure Outrage, is fully f really funny and, if you read it right, kind of scary. At once sardonic and chronically wishful, these are anxious, twitchy poems, I like that word, twitchy, that pulse with urgency and bewilderment, despair, and hope. And I thought there there's a really uh, strong element of storytelling 
in your poetry like there's there's like you work with character I do yeah I'm kind of I guess I you would call it lyric narrative but I do have a strong narrative bent I just I I do think of poems as a good medium to, to tell stories or to explore a character or to get inside a character and sort of let them speak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the I in my work is not often the I, Steve McCormand. You know, it's often a, an invented character or an imagined character. Yeah. Often that I've lived with for quite a while. So it's sort of like I get to be a little bit of a novelist, but in a shorter medium. <laughs> you were saying that you're writing a novel, and yeah. I, I don't think I would have the stamina or, or the longevity for that marathon. So I, I kind of try and do it in a short poem. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a completely different mindset, for sure. Uh, but, but I think, you know, the idea of, of bringing character to poetry, and I, it, it gives it a, a life. I think each poem sort of, for me, it kind of popped off the page because I, I like that. There is the play of language, obviously, is in poetry form, but it also has that sort of... It's also kind of nice not to be in your own head or in your own <laughs> self all the time. Uh, you know, like I think uh, four books in, that would be pretty horrible and boring to, <laughs> to be still writing the I that was I, you know, yeah, so... But it's still your yeah. sensibility. I mean, it's still sort of, it's still you. Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah. But, but yeah. it's just sort of told through through different stories. And I like the way, you know, set up. Sometimes you have a nice kick in the ending and, and it sort of draws yeah, it all together. Yeah, I look at the endings quite a bit, actually. I kind of like, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that I... I try to get right for sure. Like, I mean, obviously the beginning is as important. Otherwise, you're, you're not ever going to get to the end. Get but I do, end. I do kind of want to have a little twist at the end, if possible. Yeah. And there's a humor in them that that's very much. Yeah, that's kind of important to me. I, I don't know how that developed. I never really set out to be a funny poet, but I think it's just if you're being true to the experiences you're writing about, like often that's kind of how we respond to, you know, really horrible, serious, uh, tense times is with humor. So I try and bring that in. Yeah. Yeah. If it's relatable, I think. And then uh, I think, I just think the human being, the condition of being human is funny. Yeah. I, I often think sometimes when I don't know whether to laugh or cry, my inclination is to laugh. It's yeah. to laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I think when you hone in on those human, that there's this, this innate humor that comes out that it's a, it's a, it's not forced. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad yeah. that comes across like too, because humor is a tricky thing, right? It like is. it can it can fall totally flat or or not. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's always a bit of a risk. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's not jokey. It's not um, set up and prep all. It's but it's sort of in the in the situation. I mean, I've been doing this a little while. Like, I kind of wrote a whole book on the end of the world that was pretty funny in places, in which is an odd <laughs> thing. Like, you know, but again, yeah, um, you know, what do you do with something so immense like that? You know, the end of everything. The yeah, end of there, there's everything. There's no, there's no real way to approach that in a genuine way without bringing humor in, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. There's Mel a, there, Brooks or otherwise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a poem, and, and it's sort of about the ending. I'm trying to remember now, well, the one it was, it was when when you're wrapping things up. Uh, Where was that? Now I can't remember what it was called. At the end of the book. Or? It was near the end. Was it the one? Anyway, I digress. I should have. Oh, not for the lack of trying. Ah. Yeah. Would That's you like to read that? Yeah, let me take that up. I don't think I've ever read that one before. Uh, okay, it's page no. seventy. This is CIU Tate 9.5 FM, and we're talking to Steve McCormand, read from his book uh, called Reckon. Uh, not for lack of trying. He didn't become a raving thing, at least not for long and never in public. Decorum prevented him from a personal injury at track level. Nor did he devolve into what she had foreseen, a drunk and a shut-in, the fridge barren except for expired eggs and condiments. There are zones of disengagement even he could not reach. If anything, he became more gregarious. He wandered the city, brave face painted on, lopsided grin. He'd strike up conversations with strangers on the subway, 
stop at bars in the afternoon to nurse a beer and stare at the flat screen, closed captioning the news. On the markets, a day of losses, another woman's body found in a suitcase. Meteorologists tracking a highly unusual storm. My friends to the bad old days when the worst was yet to come. Mm. It, that actually was not the poem, but I do like the, that poem. That one's kind of a, I, I find that one a pretty serious one, yeah, actually. Yeah, that, that is, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. The one I was thinking of was the one before that, We Outro. Ah, okay. That, yeah, so there's these series, there's a little suite of poems that kind of circulate we. through the poem, the we poems. And I guess what I was thinking of in those is is what what happens when a bunch of eyes sort of decide to form a group or a clique or a mob or whatever, That's like a good try, question, to, yeah. try to become a collective? Like what happens to the eye when it becomes we? So there was this sort of series of poems that kind of telescopes out and kind of tries to get beyond that kind of personal eye and, and go a bit wider, I guess. Um, so I can read that one if you want. Okay. Uh, we outro. In the forests, we took a pecuniary interest, reserved for them a hallowed place in our memory. Everything must go. We found loopholes in intractable vows, went round and round like unclaimed luggage on a carousel. Plain speech became a pastoral. The sound of one human voice speaking to another, replaced by many voices talking at once. Yea, though we drove through the valley of the shadow, the airbrushed faces on the billboards, they smiled upon us, and we believed we could buy our way out. It was difficult to distinguish between the things we loved and said we loved. A world of hurt, but we had brilliant toys to distract us. We saw with belated clarity that we were enrolled in a crash course and that everything was on the final exam. It came as quite a shock. How gone? Real gone. All our gift cards unredeemed. Thank you. Listen to Steve McCormand read from his book called Reckon, which is published by a Brick Book. B brick books so how did you come to publish with brick books uh so i published my last book with them in uh what 2010 now the good news about armageddon uh but with them you're kind of uh you start sort of on a level playing field every time so there isn't a lot of uh, uh legacy there so you have to submit as anyone does so i just submitted yeah Oh, okay. Yeah, which is good with them. I, I mean, it keeps them from, you know, having a staple where they, you know, have publish the same people over and over and over. Um, yeah, so because that's it's good. It's really about the work. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, so they I are, like that about them. They yeah. are a fine press. They are, yeah. They really yeah and they're fun to work with. I worked with uh, Helen Gurry, who's a great uh, poet from Montreal. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a good experience. So was it was it mostly online or uh, through email uh, or, or editing? Yeah, editing? it was actually. I don't think we met one on one on this one. I have in, in the past with editors, but this one it was all online and email. Yeah, I find that like amazing that the technology has allowed us to really. Yeah, well, with uh, word track changes and things too, it really uh, speeds things up for sure and yeah. makes things uh, pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah, because you have a nice record of everything. Yeah. And you start a new file and. Yeah, and everybody can kind of do it at their own pace and their own time to, yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to. I mean, you're always up against deadlines all along the way, but I mean, it's it's yeah, it's but good. not having to meet and and uh, so so what? How long have you been working on this? Yeah, so that's a uh, um, how long? Uh, it's been a long time, uh, almost a decade, I guess it took to get this out. No, I was doing other things and oh, and, I, sure, and working yeah. and uh, yeah, like I I kind of uh, work in high tech as my kind of day job that pays the bills and stuff. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. So uh, so it can be tough to juggle your own writing with with a full time job. So uh, absolutely, yeah, and I also kind of had. Um, I, I kind of, I guess I fell out of love with poetry for a little while, you know, I, after my third book, uh, I just kind of, I guess I wasn't sure about what poetry could do, you know, like it, everybody says poetry can't change anything, you know, and, it, and in some ways at, at, at that point in my life, I kind of believed it for a while and then I kind of fell back in love with it, yeah. So there was a bit of a silence in there, yeah. I 
maybe it's good to, to question um, your beliefs. And it certainly felt good when I got back to yeah. it. You know, like I, I, f I hadn't for a while been even reading or writing poetry, and then I, it began with reading other poets and, and thinking, wow, you know, this yeah. is great, you know, and, and thinking I've been missing out here. What have, I, what have I been doing? Yeah. And then eventually the words start going in your head and you start writing yourself. So Yeah, so get, get inspired by other writers. Yeah, you know? I actually think it was, um, like, I kind of lost both my parents in a, in a fairly short time. Right? I'm like, sorry. At that age, like yeah. mid forties, this is when this kind of stuff happens, um, and I think that kind of enforced a profound silence for a long time. Like there wasn't, there wasn't really any words that would uh, approach that loss for a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was in there too. Yeah, because we're still humans, then, and we have to process and mm -hmm. live our lives, and yeah, and sort of yeah. So yeah. it was, uh, but it really felt good to get back to it, and you know, I, th I think the book turned out the way I wanted it to, and things too. Yeah, which is it's good. It's yeah. It's so when did the book? Have you this book's been launched? Uh, yeah, it launched uh, at Ben McNally in May, May fifteenth. Nice. Yeah, it's there a great was a kind store. of a group. Uh, it is. It's a lovely bookstore. Isn't it it? Is. It's a, you can't have a better place to launch. Yeah, book, it's yeah. just got such character and. Yeah. yeah, so that was fun. And then I haven't actually read uh, from the book other than that. Uh, so this, some of those poems are the first time I've read them aloud. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, is there a poem in here that you really like to read? Uh, yeah, there is one maybe that I wouldn't mind reading. Um, okay. So, so the first section in the book, um, I guess, is kind of – it's called Bodilies. And it, it's kind of about um, how our bodies are zoned commercial in many ways. So – so I think I'll read a 7-Eleven poem. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll footnote it with, um, so the big gulp soda at 7-Eleven is 32 ounces. Uh, and the average adult stomach holds only 30 ounces. So for me, that was kind of a metaphor about human folly, et cetera, I guess. Is that uh, something that you looked up? That uh, you I came upon it. I don't know where. You know how you see those so listicles bizarre. and things online. So, <laughs> so you know, I, I, I'm always a bit of a scavenger or a scrounger. I yeah, always follow too, those things yeah. away because I know at some point I'm going to want to do something with yeah. them. But, but uh, yeah, it just uh, it it seemed like a really something. There was something innately human about that, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, very so, strange. So I'll read this one called Big Gulp. Has anyone in recorded history actually cried over spilt milk? By the hot foods case in which wieners and taquitos rotate in perpetuity, the sumptuous glister of grease under glass, I fumbled the just-filled cistern, watched it topple in slow-mo, the fountain coke gushing out a tsunami over the tiles. I'll confess I nearly wept. The cashier's mild contempt as he called for an unseen subordinate to bring the mop and pail. Who cares if it causes cavities, unclogs drains, strips the rust off an old pocket knife I found buried in the garden? Is it apocryphal that the cops carry two gallons in the trunks of their cruisers to scour blood from the road after an accident? I don't feel like Googling it right now. This I know for certain. All forms of happiness are a calculated risk. We should treasure it up. Life's concentrated sweetness, its carnal stickiness and fizz, the shock of it on the tongue while we can. Why order off the menu when there's an all-day buffet? Oh, to be as animated as bubbles, as frivolous as liquid sugar. Slurp, slurp, glug, glug. So what if our appetites betray us, if our poking straws are never satisfied, not even after they've touched bottom and sucked it dry? We are ugly, but we have the Cheetos. <laughs> Thank you. This is Steve McCormand reading from his book, Reckon which is published by uh, Brick Books. And I guess we, we it was mentioned earlier on the back of the book that there's a, a poem about a photographer's lifelong desire to collect snowflakes. And it, it looks like that um, there are several uh, photos 
on the cover, and I guess these are actual snowflakes. They are. So, uh, so the poem uh, is about a, a guy called Wilson A. Snowflake Bentley, who uh, uh, around the beginning of the 1900s uh, was kind of the world's foremost authority on uh, snowflakes, and he was a citizen scientist from Vermont. Uh, so the book cover is one of his slides. Oh, uh, wow. So he was a pioneer in photomicrography, it was called. So uh, so photographing very small things uh, like snowflakes, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so uh, they're just amazing. They're kind they of, are. yeah, they're, they're, uh, they just struck me when I saw them and I figured I had to write something about him. Wow. Would you like to read one more? Uh, sure, I can read the, the Bentley poem if you'd like. I would. Um, the, uh, what would I say about this one? Um, I guess I've said it all. I, I guess I do have a, a certain love for citizen scientists. Uh, I, you know, I'm a guy who reads popular science and stuff like that, so I, I kind of like when someone uh, does things like that with their life um, outside of academia, I guess. Yeah, but as pure love. Yeah, passion. pure love, yeah. Uh, so this is called The Photographer of Snowflakes. As a boy, he tried to sketch them, but his pencil couldn't scurry fast enough before the designs melted or sublimed in air. He wanted to hold them in his mind, but they were already losing resolution. Later, he would stand for hours in the cold with a bellows camera mated to a microscope, waiting for the first snowflakes to commence their twitchy, wind-tossed descent. His subjects didn't like to pose. With the feathers of a severed turkey wing, he'd coax them gently, gently under the lens. Conditions had to be just right. Too warm and their uniqueness would dissolve before his eyes. Too cold and they'd shatter. Some winters he'd capture only a handful. Other years they'd come all in a flurry. His life's work, 5,000 intimate portraits. The glass plates rejected by the Smithsonian, sold for five cents apiece. He died, I swear I couldn't make this up of pneumonia after walking home six miles through a blizzard. If you're going to die, why not in a storm of devotion after looking long and hard that the bits of pure beauty might be seen? Even if it's a myth that there are no two alike, I choose to believe it. You have to believe in something. Have you ever watched a dog playing in fresh snow? It's of this particular happiness I speak. The sky gives it away for a song. Thank you. Listen to Steve McCormand read from his book, Reckon, uh, which is published by Brick Books. Thank you so much for coming in and reading for us and talking to me. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. We're just going to take a short break, and we're going to be right back with David Bray and we're going to play the title track from his CD called Crowded Isolation on CIUT 89.5 FM. It's a crowded, crowded isolation no, you can't stand it. No, no, you can't stand it. And my heart, my heart can't stand the pain
Yeah, I'm getting it, man. I'm getting it. Hey, Jessica, check me out. What's that noise? It's not noise, girl. It's me on these tables, man. I'm a DJ now. You're a DJ? For sure, and Steve says all the gear that you need to be a pro DJ. Where? At the back of the store. They got tables, CD players, mixers, samplers, and check out these lights, man. Wow, awesome. Oh, no, I'm having a flashback. 415 Queen West, stagemusic.com. CIUT 89.5, Toronto. And we're back. This is Nancy Jane Bullock. We're in the chair tonight, and I'm very uh, happy and honored to have David Bray here. Uh, he is a, uh, I'll just read a bit. It says that David Bray's unique artistic vision has established him as one of Canadian music's leading songwriters. His compelling lyrical flair combined with an ear for musical hooks has been hailed by critics and industry veterans alike around the world. David is a poet and a storyteller as much as he is a writer of songs, all without compromising on his superb brand of R&B, which is a bedrock of his latest collection. And that was what we were just listening to, and that was crowded isolation. Welcome to the studio, David. Thanks very much for having me. No, my pleasure, for sure. So this uh, this CD, when did this come out, this collection? Uh, a little earlier this year. A little, and it's getting airplay around the world? Yeah, in many it's, it's on over 100 stations around the world. It's also doing well on Spotify and that kind of thing. Yeah. It's available uh, on virtually everything. Um, it's on Spotify, it's on Deezer, it's available on iTunes, Apple Music, uh, and uh, a variety of others around the world. And you've worked with a, a group of remarkable musicians on this CD. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored. A, a good group of friends have come, and that's why the album says uh, it's actually credited to David Bray and friends. I, I can tell you about a few of the people. Um, honored to have Bob Babbitt. If for those who don't know, Bob is a, a Motown legend. He played bass on 200 hits, including Midnight Train to Georgia, wow. and, uh, War, and uh, he played with... Uh, uh, there's there's so many others that... Uh, um, Touch Me in the Morning with Diana Ross, and 
Michael Jackson and everybody you could imagine. Wow, and Marvin Gaye, Stevie uh, Wonder. Marvin Gaye, that's right. He was there for the What's Going On sessions. Uh, I love imagine? that song. Just, just a delight to, to, uh, for me as a fan, because it starts as I start as a fan, um, talking to him about the, the days, all the things he's done. And even in recent years, he, Rod Stewart, uh, Phil Collins, um, et cetera. But that's one of the fellows. Uh, uh, that we've also got Daniel Lanois. Uh, if you know Daniel, the producer, he won 10 Grammys. Yeah, uh, he's worked with a lot of... Oh, Bob Dylan and... Bob Dylan and... And, and, and every, Neil Young and everybody else you can name. And we've yeah. got uh, Garth Hudson for the From band. The band, if, yeah. the band, yeah. Garth is uh, tremendous, so I've spent a lot of time uh, with with Garth and uh, oh there was um, Kim Mitchell Kim Mitchell that's right and uh, Jeff Healy before he passed oh yeah he's on this CD too uh, uh, yes he is actually there's a cut that I did early on the, the, the key here was it was done over a 10-year period. Three albums. It's a trilogy. Oh, wow. Of which this is the second. So some of the cuts date back uh, a ways, and some, some are, are quite new. But uh, the reason... Um, I, I decided to finally uh, bring the editing to a halt and, and actually uh, release it. I, I was quite sick um, year before last with cancer, and then last year I was in a coma for a week and had a variety of problems. I'm not. I'm fine now, and I'm not complaining. But okay. uh, glad but to hear that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, everything's fine. <laughs> you good. I, I, I just uh, I, I only mention it because that was part of the impetus to say, David, stop recording. I, I, by the way. In addition to the three albums, I've got a mountain of outtakes, you know. So I, I, I could, uh, well, there's many more songs that we did record. So, it's so it, it, is. it was uh, it was it was great. And I've uh, I've got my one of my partners, uh, Lorraine Reed, singing on a, a lot of this album. So, it's it, it's good. The first album I sang most of it with Lorraine was always with me. But um, I sang most of it, and then uh, this one I brought in. Uh, I, I wrote everything, produced it, uh, wrote the song, I mean the music and lyrics, and produced it and played on it and sang somewhat on it. But uh, I brought in a, a variety of other singers to work with me uh, on this, especially uh, because the, uh, the, 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 the sound of it, and it's, it's very R&B and... Um, uh, Neo Soul. It. it uh, I guess I. I. I, tr- I wanted some. Lorraine can do anything, so yeah. <laughs> she, she sings lead on a lot of it. But uh, it's. It's wonderful. The, the. The problem is I'm an old white guy, and uh, by. By that I. I'm only being facetious to an extent. But in my. In my heart, I'm a 25 year old black woman. So um, not sexually. I don't mean that. <laughs> We'll just stick to the music. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and musically speaking, I'm, I'm. Uh, uh, it's in my heart, and uh, so we've got a lot of people, young and old, uh, uh, friends coming in, um, and uh, as you can see, Lorraine happens to be young and black. So, uh, not not that color matters at all, um, but uh, I, I'm doing well in the states on Urban AC. Uh, for uh, for example, it was number four. For four weeks on the R and B state on the R and B charts in Buffalo, so uh, yeah, it's it's um, I'm very pleased to to get the reaction. Yeah, she was the former powerhouse vocalist of Temperance. Uh, yes, uh, back a ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sh- but I know that she considers this to be her best of. That she's well, that's good. She's a wonderful person. Glad that she's proud of it. It's. Uh, and then also on you worked with Justin Abedin. Ju- Justin Abedin of Jack Soul. Yeah. For those that remember it, Jack I remember Soul. Jack Soul. Oh yeah, it I was played uh, Jack Soul on the radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you might like the SF album then. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, J- uh, Hayden Neal. Of course, I knew him, but he passed away, as you know. Um, but Justin, yeah, I sorry. consider him the best R and B. Uh, guitarist in Canada. Oh, and Colin Linden. And Colin Linden. Colin yeah. Linden's my long friend, longtime friend. He's he's in Nashville, but he came up to Toronto a number of times to do this. And yeah, he's he's great. One of the great blues guitarists and and country. He he actually played with Bob Dylan yeah. on a tour and, and and many other things. Colin's great. Harris. So so they're both great great guitarists. 
Colin and, and I played guitar too. <laughs> <laughs> I am nowhere in their league, and I played keyboards. And What's your favorite guitar? Electric guitar? No, yeah. not my favorite. My favorite, if you really want my favorite, it's a Martin D twenty eight. Okay, I, I've got a Martin D twenty eight that is uh, it's sunburst and it's vintage. Wow. And oh yeah, it dates back to about. 1970 so it's Ooh. so fantastic just a, yeah i i love that of course on electric guitars the strat is good <laughs> so, you know uh, strat is the the knee jerk it seems the, favorite. The, yeah yeah but it doesn't compare to, to the, martin. Uh, the, the martin d28 that's work of art yeah, yeah. It's, good, it's good stuff it's good stuff so do you do you, do you perform anywhere, or is everything in the studio? Or <coughs> well, with all my health problems, which were not insignificant, I, I recorded around them as well. Um, I, 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 I've been particularly weak, and I haven't done too much in terms of life. I may get all the guys together. I'll get try to get Garth Hudson to come up and, and join us with a bunch of the others, Colin. And we may do uh, uh, one or two dates, but um, my health has sort of prohibited me from doing too much. No, you want to, yeah, for sure. Health comes first. And, and I'm so happy in the studio. Uh, I, I guess I, I, I learned from Steely Dan that way. I st they, they spent their whole life in a studio. They spent their whole oh, life. I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm as happy in the studio any, as anywhere else. Do you, do you have your own studio, your own I had my own studio for our 20 years, uh, but I let it go when... Um, and, 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 and much of it that I recorded, it was great. Um, it was uh, uh, when I got very sick. I, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't keep it up. Uh, I, nor did I want to. If I'm in bed. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I, I uh, gave it up at that point in time, and now I work out of Revolution Recording, which is great facility. Great. Uh, I, it, it just one studio of the year in Canada. Oh, wow. Is that in Toronto, Mississauga? Oh, yeah. It's in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. I go around to different places. I mean, some of my stuff was recorded in Nashville, some of it, um, well, elsewhere, but a lot of it, of course, in Toronto. It's my home. So how, how do you get on European radio? Is that is there a system? Is there Well, I've got distributors. Who distributors do, who do? Yeah, so that they put me on all the various things uh, f from you know iTunes and Apple Music and Amazon Music and and uh, Spotify and Deezer and, and many things so that is distributed around the world then I've got um, as far as the the recordings are concerned uh, then I've got uh, promotion people um, uh, that work with me on uh, Canadian press American press and uh, and uh, and international press, so I, I'm fortunate to have been reviewed uh, by a lot of people yeah. ac across the world. So when you started, did you write first or did you play first, or did they? Come oh, um, I sort of came to as as you as you just read. I I sort of came to music. Well, I was going to say through poetry, but I, I, I was equally active in, in both mm -hmm. uh, early on. And, uh, and my real uh, interest was uh, trying to do, um, you know, uh, in this album, uh, echoing uh, Motown, soul, etc., um, uh, Stax, etc. Oh, with wow. A, with a, with Stax yeah, record. Sure. Um, with a, uh, Motown is, 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 is my true love, but I love Stax and I love all the others. Um, but the key here was not just that, but to do it with a lyric that was of both thought provoking and different. There's no way, there's no ooey baby on my stuff. I, I don't mean to, to criticize people who do ooey baby, but it's, you know, you know it's I mean, their style and your style uh, is yeah, different. There's mine is meant to be, uh, meant to stand alone if you read the lyrics and uh, I will yeah I've written I've, I've run them out actually so yeah I so uh, yeah so I'm 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 very appreciative of all uh, the, the people the friends and the people that have worked with me and continue to work with me so you say this is part one and there's there's it's a trilogy so are uh, they all night, no night rains uh was oh. the album out last year okay and uh that did well too that was on 
many, many stations around the world. Uh, and that was part one. This is part oh, two. Oh, and this is part two. Okay. This is part two. And then I'm going back, going, I'm finishing, I'm working on finishing part three. Uh, and uh, after that, well, I've got life insurance, so <laughs> I, I guess my wife's hoping that I go. But, uh, no, I'm being facetious. I know you are. Uh, um, yeah. But, uh, no, I. Uh, who knows? I don't know that I'll do more after the third, uh, although I've got a number of outtakes, so I might release a fourth. Yeah, so, you, so it's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good goal to have something that, that uh, looks at attainable so that, because I find if you make it too big of a goal, sometimes things don't get done. Well, uh, that's where I said my illnesses prompted me to act. To act. Uh, where I, whereas I didn't. Uh, well, y there's a, and ask any musician, there's the temptation to edit and re-edit. Yeah. And then put and more overdubs and, <laughs> oh my God. And then you just got to go. Yeah, then you just got to say, yeah. well, David, you're in bed now, so we'll release it. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to go out with a track. Um, this is, uh, what's the track we're going out it's with? It's called One Last Chance, and I will tell you, it's uh, my uh, parents passed away uh, not uh, too long ago, and it, it deals with them. You might not know it, but I'm giving you an insight into, or an inside tip into in, what it's into really how about. how to listen to. And this is CIUT 89.5 FM. Thank you very much to all my guests tonight. Thank you to David Thank Bray. you very much. Thank you to Steve McCormand and thank you to Matt Keyes. So please, uh, please uh, check out on CIUT 89.5 FM, CIUT.FM tomorrow. If you want to listen to it again, it will be posted sometime. And uh, Valentino next week, I'll be back in two. Please remember Lights on Bikes and stick around for Great Canadian Radio with Mark Tara at 11 o'clock. And thanks again to Chris Capososo. Cheers. Ah!